Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to our news edition. Thank you for joining us. The U.S. ambassador in our country, Donald Liu, urged the Albanian young people to be part of the judiciary and politics in the future, hoping for better decision-making. The U.S. diplomats indirectly expressed his discontent regarding the decision-making in these sectors, which are currently being criticized by the internationals over corruption. Many of you dream of becoming doctors, lawyers, architects, and engineers. I hope that many of you become part of public services, like police officers, judges, and even politicians. Albania needs that the best young people serve as decision makers in the future, declared Ambassador Liu. Mr. Liu made the statement during an activity organized in the framework of the celebration for 25th anniversary of Albania-USA diplomatic relations. The U.S. ambassador avoided commenting on the justice reform, but sources within the meeting say that Mr. Liu is learned to have told that the justice reform is vital for the country. Meanwhile, the Albanian foreign minister, Didmir Bushati, commented on the strategic partnership between Albania and the USA. Minister Bushati said that the USA is Albania's main supporter in its integration path. President of the Republic of Albania, Bujar Nishani, has returned the law on additional measures for public safety to Parliament for review. The President argues that the law that has been adopted on March 10, 2016, conflicts with the Constitution, the European Human Rights Convent, and with the relevant jurisprudence of the Republic of Albania. The President highlights that the law does not guarantee the respect and protection of personal data and provides unlimited power to the State Police to install security cameras everywhere without giving any assurance how people's personal data will be preserved. President's legal reasoning underlines that through this deal, the state intervenes in the private and family life of the citizens, affecting the interests that are protected by the Constitution. According to the President, the parliamentary documents do not clarify why the current measures have not brought results and why the use of additional safety measures will play an important role in maintaining public security, elimination of illegality and informality. The government has started the second phase of the operation against informality, which provides the withdrawal of the tax inspectors from the field and auditing of businesses through an electronic data system. Considering the reform to be very important, the Prime Minister declared that this operation guarantees honest competition and brings more revenues to the state budget. The second phase of the operation against informality is the answer to all those who have seen this operation with skepticism. We will have impressive results by the end of this year, declared Prime Minister Rama. The audits of big businesses will be conducted based on an analysis of risk and tax inspectors will perform the audits from their own offices. Business owners will be notified about the audit. Minister of Finance Arben Ahmeta declared that the accumulated data during the first phase of the operation will be consulted and the business owners will be notified in case when there is any violation. The reps of the government gave assurance to the business owners that there will not be increased taxes in the 2017 fiscal package, but instead there will be offered easiness to businesses. After the public invitation the Prime Minister made to the DP Chairman to dialogue over the justice reform, he declares that the opposition is making efforts to block the judicial reform. The Prime Minister headed the meeting of the Socialist Parliamentary Group, where he has learned to have listed two reasons why the Democratic Party does not want the justice reform. According to Prime Minister Rama, the first reason the opposition does not want the justice reform is because of the violations it has made while in governance, which would have been discovered by a reformated justice system. Secondly, he thinks that the opposition is trying to hamper the accession of negotiations for the EU membership. The Prime Minister has also commented on the DP bills on the integrity of the senior officials and on the functioning of inquiry commissions. It is learned that the PM declared that the majority has been loyal to the opposition demands, but it cannot violate the law and the constitution to meet the DP demands. It is also learned that the Prime Minister has asked that the referendum be serious and transparent and with a high participation. The Socialist MP Taurian Bala also held the same stance. After the meeting of the SP group, MP Bala had this to say, the referendum gives to the socialist members the opportunity to say their words and bring our internal debate to an end. The socialists are invited to participate in this special event. Massive participation is more important than the result. Majority rejected today one of the opposition conditions to return to its normal relations with the Assembly. Parliamentary Law Commission discussed the amendments to the law on the functioning of parliamentary inquiry commissions. Through these changes, the Democrats aim to stop the majority from blocking the work of the inquiry commissions. 
The majority MPs present at the Commission consider the DP request to be in conflict with constitutional principles. The Democrats consider their request to be rational and according to them, the amendments to the law are necessary to make the work of the Inquiry Commission sufficient. Meanwhile, the Socialists declare that this request violates the Constitution and the democracy. According to them, the Democrats are not providing any constitutional argument. The Socialist MP Pandali Maiko argued that the DP proposal affects the participation of the majority in Inquiry Commissions. He expressed against the DP proposal, but he agreed with them at one point that the Inquiry Commissions have failed and have continuously been blocked. The Democrats considered their request to be in respecting of December 2014 agreement between the parties, but the Socialists considered the DP demands to be a justification to hamper the justice reform. The discussion of the DP demands returned the opposition to the Law Commission after several weeks of boycott. The parties also debated over the firearm of the Democrats MP against Razimiri. Parliamentary Law Commission will discuss tomorrow another demand of the opposition, the amendments to decriminalization law. Democratic Party Chairman Lutz Zimbasha asked from the USA to help the country in the fight against corruption and crime. Speaking from the city of Fier, where he met with some traders, the DP chairman praised the help of the USA and declared that Albania still needs the American help during these moments, which he considers to be difficult. The DP chairman promised tax cuts to the traders. The main point of the DP program is to return to the citizens the money the oligarchs have taken from them. We will return this money through public investments in infrastructure, health education, kindergartens and agriculture. Our program also includes tax decrees so that the citizens can save more money, said Vasha. According to the DP chairman, these problems are present because of the absence of justice. The citizens asked from the Democratic Party chairman to organize protests to bring poverty to an end. That is the end of our edition for this evening. Thanks again for watching. Please join us again at 6 p.m. tomorrow for more news in English. Thanks and good night.